Hi, I'm Caitlin, and welcome to video zero of the Quick Start series for the Analog Discovery 2. In this video, I'll go over the hardware details of the Analog Discovery 2, introduce each tool in Waveforms 2015, and let you know what you should expect from this video series. Let's start with the hardware. This is the Analog Discovery 2, a pocket-sized, all-in-one USB device, meaning it's packed full of analog and digital tools. On the top, you'll find a headphone connector for audio signal output, a USB connector for programming, communication, and power, and an auxiliary connector in case your application requires more current than USB can supply. On the bottom, you'll find a single 30-pin connector. This is where you can either attach the fly wires or the separate BNC adapter board. With the fly wires attached, you can see which channel goes to which wire. In the box, you'll find a pinout diagram that shows more detail. Oscilloscope channels 1 and 2 are used by the oscilloscope, voltmeter, spectrum analyzer, network analyzer, and data logger tools. The next set of wires are the ground wires. You'll see that there are two sets of ground wires, all of them colored black. You can use any of these wires to connect to your circuit's ground. The next set of wires are used with the waveform generators. The yellow wire is waveform generator channel 1, and the yellow wire with the white stripe is waveform generator channel 2. The waveform generators are used in the waveform generator tool and the network analyzer tool. After the second set of ground wires, the next set of wires are external triggers 1 and 2. The gray wire corresponds to trigger 1, and the gray wire with the white stripe corresponds to trigger 2. These can be used in any tool where you're able to trigger with signals from an external source. The last eight sets of wires correspond to digital input and output channels 0 through 15. They alternate between pink, green, purple, and brown, with the bottom set of wires having the same color scheme, but with an added white stripe. These wires are used in the logic analyzer, pattern generator, protocol analyzer, and static I.O., and can con be configured to any combination of inputs and outputs based on the tool's capabilities. So far, I've listed 11 predefined tools, including the oscilloscope, waveform generator, voltmeter, power supply, data logger, logic analyzer, pattern generator, static I.O., network analyzer, spectrum analyzer, and protocol analyzer. All of these tools are available in Waveforms 2015, which is free to download. More information about installation and download can be found in videos 2A through C. Now let's go through each of the tools. The oscilloscope is a two-channel fully differential oscilloscope. It provides 14-bit resolution and 100 mega sample per second sample rate. With the BNC adapter attached, it has a 30 MHz bandwidth, and without it, a 9 MHz bandwidth. The input range is between positive and negative 25 volts, but is protected between positive and negative 50 volts. It is important to note that with the BNC adapter attached, the oscilloscope is no longer differential, but is instead single-ended. The waveform generator has two channels. It provides 14-bit resolution and 100 mega sample per second sample rate. With the BNC adapter attached, it has 12 MHz bandwidth, and without it, it has 9 MHz bandwidth. The power supplies have two channels, one positive supply and one negative supply. The positive supply can provide between 0.5 volts and 5 volts, and the negative supply can provide between negative 0.5 volts and negative 5 volts. When powered by USB, the maximum power output of the tool is 500 milliwatts. When powered by an auxiliary supply, each channel can provide up to 2.1 watts. Regardless of how the device is powered, each supply can provide up to 700 milliamps of current. The voltmeter and the data logger share the oscilloscope channels and have the same specifications. The data logger shows the DC, true RMS, and AC RMS values. The logic analyzer has 16 channels and 100 megasample per second sample rate. It uses 3.3 volts as a logic high, but it is tolerant up to 5 volts. Viewing is available for single channels, and SPI, I2C, UART, and Parallel can be interpreted. The pattern generator shares the same 16 channels with the logic analyzer and has a sample rate of 100 megasamples per second. It is an algorithmic pattern generator and outputs 3.3 volt logic at 12 milliamps. The digital I.O. shares the same 16 channels with the pattern generator and logic analyzer and gives you access to virtual LEDs, buttons, switches, and displays. The network analyzer uses the same channels as the waveform generator and oscilloscope. It has a frequency range of between 1 Hz and 10 MHz and the option of between 5 and 1,000 steps. Data can be displayed in Bode, Nichols, and Nyquist plots. The spectrum analyzer has two channels and power spectrum algorithms, Fast Fourier Transform and Chirp Z Transform. Data can be displayed in linear or logarithmic modes. 
the protocol analyzer can send and receive data over SPI, I2C, and UART. It shares the same 16 channels as the logic analyzer and pattern generator and static I.O. Now that I've gone over the hardware details and some information about each of the tools, let's talk about the software, Waveforms 2015. Each of these tools is available in Waveforms 2015 and can be used alone, in conjunction, or controlled by the script editor. The script editor allows you to write custom JavaScript scripts to control the tools and run custom tests. Additionally, when you install Waveforms 2015, you can choose to install SDK. SDK is a software development kit that allows you to create custom applications. It comes with the user manual examples in Python and C++ and a library header file. Now let's talk about some of the common features you'll see amongst all the tools in Waveforms 2015. The file, control, and window menu options are all pretty standard within each tool. The file menu will allow you to save the current configuration of Waveforms or open an existing one, as well as export the data. All Waveforms data can be exported as an image, CSV, text, or TDMS file. When you export as an image, you'll see in the bottom right hand an originality stamp. Here you can name the image and it will automatically have a time, date, and device stamp. The control menu will allow you to run or stop the tool, and depending on the tool, may allow you to start a single acquisition. The window menu will allow you to switch between Waveforms tabs and windows. If you want to open the current tab into a window, you click this button. The same goes for changing it back into a tab. One of the tabs that automatically opens is the Help tab. This contains information about each of the tools and about the hardware device itself. This is a great place to start if you get stuck. Green arrows will allow you to expand and close the option panes, and gears will always give you access to additional options. In the bottom right corner of the screen, you'll see the connected device name. If you click on it, the device manager will open. We'll talk more about the device manager in video 3. Next to that is the status. If you click on that, you can see the USB voltage and current, as well as the temperature of the device. Nearby is a gear that will open the general waveform settings. Here you can change how the instrument windows interact, the style of the window, the analog and digital plot colors, and several other settings. At the top of the window, on each of the tabs, there is an icon. This icon displays whether the tool is running or stopped and can be used to run or stop the tool. That's it for our introduction to the Analog Discovery 2. Video 1 will go through what's in the box when you order an Analog Discovery 2. Videos 2A through C will go through installation in Windows, Mac, and Linux. Video 3 will go through calibration in the Device Manager. And videos 4 through 15 will go through each of the tools. More resources for your Analog Discovery 2 can be found in its Resource Center. Here you'll find a Getting Started Guide, tutorials on each of its tools, specifications, a pinout diagram, and community contributed projects. If you need help beyond that, your questions are always welcome at forum.digitalinc.com. Subscribe to stay up to date to Digitalinc products and services. Thanks for watching!